so you have GeoServer running. You've taken a look at some of the data that comes with it, but we really want to add our own data. And that's pretty simple. So let's get started. First step, let's actually add our data. I'm going to be using a shapefile here, although I'm not a big fan of shapefiles, but it's a nice, simple example. Normally you would have this connected to some type of enterprise database, maybe Postgres or PostGIS, and actually grabbing the actual data right out of the database. But we'll just use this shapefile as a simple example. So I'm going to take this whole folder and I'm going to copy it into the data folder for the product itself. So that's here. So let's let's actually go right back to C, Tomcat Geo Server, Web Apps, and then here's where Geo Server's root is. Inside a Geo Server, there'll be a data folder. Under the data folder there's another data folder. And the reason is, is this data is the application level data. This is the actual GIS data. In this case, it's file-based items. And we're just gonna copy this folder and put it right into here. And now I have the data stored inside of the GeoServer area so it could be accessed. Next, we're gonna create a workspace. Now that workspace is there just to uniquely identify this. And when you're referencing the data through requests, you'll typically do the workspace name, colon, and then the actual layer name. And the workspace component of that is to help make sure when you have multiple servers being used at the same time, you don't have a duplicate. So you should use a name that makes sense. Now, given this is Fleming's data, I'm gonna actually create a new workspace called Fleming. And the namespace URI doesn't really matter what it is. It, it's just, again, something to uniquely identify it. Uh, it. It's a good idea to use your organization URL because then nobody else would use it. So this is another way just to uniquely identify things. This is just to make sure there's not two things named the same when you're dealing with multiple servers in the web environment. Okay, so we have our workspace. Next, we need to tell it how to connect to the data. So we're going to add a store for this. And you can see there's many different types and there's a whole series of extensions for GeoServer to be able to connect to other data types. So on the GeoServer website, where you downloaded the initial package, you can actually find all the different extensions. So there's uh, enterprise databases of different types, there's a whole bunch of uh, other types that you might want to connect to. So there's instructions here on, on getting it to connect to the actual data source. But again, for now, I'm just going to use the shapefile and it's already included with the product. So you can see here, there's a directory shapefiles and there's also a shapefile specifically. I'm going to use the directory of shapefiles just to show you as an example, even though there is only one shapefile in that directory, uh, this would give you a better option to be able to add many at once. So I can have one store pointing at that directory. Now, the first thing is you need to identify the workspace. And again, that's just to help uniquely identify the data. So Fleming, the workspace we just created is the one I'm gonna use. Now this does require a source name. So I'm just gonna put Fleming in there. And here's where we have to actually give it the directory name. And the nice thing is there's a browse option inside a GeoServer. So if we just click that and you can see there's a whole bunch of different directories. Now GeoServer has to be able to access this data. So this is not on your local computer. This is on the server itself. So I've placed that Fleming trails data on the server into the servlet folder within GeoServer's root. So that way I can actually get at it. And that's the data directory. And you'll notice there's another data directory here. Because remember there was two data directories. So data, data. So let's just go back to the folder path here just to remind you. So that was under Tomcat, GeoServer, Web Apps, GeoServer, data, data. And now we see Fleming right here. And that's of course what we see here as well, Fleming. So if I select that, there's my actual trail data. And I'm just going to hit OK here. We're not clicking on the data itself because we want this folder to be added. 
and there we have it. So file, data, Fleming. So you can see it's actually focusing on the data itself. And save that. And now we have a new layer getting created from this. So if there was multiple shape files within that folder, they would be listed here. And we just want to select the one, in this case, Fleming Trails, and we'll publish that. So now we're actually jumping straight into the next step. We're actually in the layers area and we're adding this new layer. And in this case, it's going to be called Fleming Trails. And you can see Fleming, that's the store, uh, or sorry, not the store, that's the workspace name. So this is how it's being referenced. That's why it's important to have that name uh, well thought out. So if this file or shape file was only called trails, there might be many different trails. So Fleming trails would be a good naming convention. So you can see this isn't the best because it's Fleming Fleming trails. So you can think about the naming convention of your shape files inside of the uh, Geo server. Okay, so we can enter the name here, Fleming trails. So we could actually kind of override this and make it smaller. I'm just gonna leave it as the default for now. It's enabled, meaning people can go look at it. It's advertised, so they can actually go get a catalog and it will list it. This is the title. We can enter an abstract, we can add some keywords. So there's many different things we can do for this. You can see it's already picked up some of the data items. We do have to enter some values. For example, there has to be a bounding box for the data. And this is where the data are located in the real world in that coordinate system. And the nice thing is there's this nice option, just compute from data. It'll go grab the min x and y, max x and y for the data. The same thing with the bounding box, you can do the same. And you can see all of the different fields that are within this. These are the attributes. And we can save that. And so we have now added that to the layers. So we've added a workspace, we've connected the folder to a store, and by doing that we started creating a layer immediately. So in this list is Fleming Trails. You can see it's already defining it as a line type. So let's just go quickly preview that layer. Fleming Trails. And we'll select a PNG of 8-bit. And there is my U request URL of a WMS service. 110 request of get map, the specific layer. And so you can see there's my workspace name, colon, that's what that is, yeah, encoded, the layer name, and then it gives me the bounding box, which was calculated. And you get an, a width and a height for the request. You get the individual type. You can have the format, it's an image. It'll be coming back as a PNG mode, 8-bit. So that's the URL that was actually requesting the data. If you want to learn more about the actual WMS request or any of the other types of services that are available in GeoServer, the documentation is pretty rich. It gives you lots of details about every single parameter and the format that you can use to be able to make the requests. And these are the different native requests, WMS, WFS, WCS, WPS, and also a CS. W. So those are the main different types that are associated with GeoServer and you can read about how to make those individual requests and how to format the URLs. So thank you very much.